A leader and a legacy. What defines a leader? And how do people leave legacies? In order to understand what makes this, you have to know what each of these means. A good leader is someone who does not tell people or force people to follow them for when they do so willingly. A good legacy is one that lasts and can keep going even after that person is long gone. But who fits all these criteria? A man named Robert E. Lee, from commander of the Confederates in the Civil War to unsung hero of modern war innovations, Lee has helped us all in one way or another. In order to really understand Robert E. Lee, you need to understand where he came from. His father, Henry Lee, grew up in Virginia as well. This would only further plant his family tree's roots there for later on down the timeline. Henry was accepted into Princeton Academy, where he would find his calling. When he graduated in 1773, the American Revolutionary War was already in full swing. Henry would head home to see his loved ones and prepare for battle. He was eventually promoted to war officer after showing great honor in battle. One example of this in particular was a surprise attack on British soldiers in Paulus Hook. The interesting thing about this battle was it was so perfectly planned and executed, 400 enemy soldiers were captured while there was only one friendly casualty. He would soon earn his nickname, Henry Light Horse Harry Lee, for his agile movement and skill when mounted on horseback. Soon after, Henry Lee gained recognition from George Washington as an outstanding countryman and a well-rounded individual. As Lee's life began to slow down, the support from Washington came full circle as old Light Horse Harry became the elected governor of Virginia for three terms in a row. Somewhere in his life, he found room for four children, the last of which was Robert. Even with the family's high-ranked position in Virginia, they definitely weren't rolling in the dough. As a direct effect of this, Robert E. Lee didn't have the money to get a, into an academy. Instead, he decided to join the United States Military Academy at West Point. After years of grueling work and time, it was finally time for graduation. He came second in his class of 1829. This opened plenty of doors for still young Robert E. Lee, the first of which was an opportunity about 15 years after he graduated to serve his nation in the Mexican-American War. He quickly became a captain under General Winfield Scott. Robert E. Lee was so outstanding, General Scott wrote a letter quoting him as the very best soldier I ever saw in the field. This was the first of many times he would lead the charge into battle. The next would come shortly after, thanks to Scott's letter of recommendation. While John Brown's attempt to free slaves at the raid of Harper's Ferry may have been heroic, it was still illegal at the time. This meant action had to be taken, and the man with the plan, so to speak, was newly promoted Colonel Robert E. Lee. With his strategy, all gunfire was over within an hour of his arrival. While Colonel Lee may not have agreed with slavery, at the time, the law was the law. This would become a critical feature of Lee that stood out in him among others that split him between home and heart. But for some men, home is always where the heart is. With how successful Robert E. Lee was in previous battles, both sides knew he would be a critical tiebreaker for whenever the country split. The Union quickly made offer after offer to Lee, trying to persuade him to their side. Just imagine being put in his place. On one side lay your morals, and on the other your family, your home. The beloved general of the South would soon become the face of Confederacy. He set his life upon God, family, and the future of his country. As he led the Confederate army, he would say, True patriotism sometimes requires of men to act exactly contrary, at one point, to which it does another. And the motive which impels them to desire to do right is precisely the same. He stated this relating to his own life by taking sides with the South only because of his home state of Virginia. He truly was a patriot of the North till he learned that he would be fighting against his own family and friends. He would have left his love as well as his children at home. 
In this, he felt the same pain and suffering, if not more, than his fellow men in arms. His war tactics were like that of no other and had great impact on that of many today. One outnumbered in both troops and ammo all the way through the war, he was still able to come out victorious in many battles. One example in particular is the Battle of Bull Run. Robert E. Lee and his troops held the lines of Manassas Rail System. While the Union attacked blindly, the Confederates, led by Robert E. Lee, read them like a book. His patience and ability to let the enemy make the first move let them triumph repeatedly. While others have used this strategy, Robert E. Lee was known for his timing and knowing just when and where to strike. The ability to hold back and read the enemy is a skill that is being used in war today. President Barack Obama, on the subject of counterterrorism in ISIS, has said, We will the great and ultimately destroy ISIS through a comprehensive and sustained counterterrorism plan. As you see, both use patience as a war strategy, which not all do. In the end, the war faded to gray, and you saw that there never were sides. You see that Robert E. Lee was only as bad as Ulysses S. Grant. Both sides were of equal fault, and the faces of each were just the representatives of the extremes. And now I bid you a farewell, as General Lee did his troops. I need not tell the survivors of so many hard-fought battles who have remained steadfast to the last that I have consented to this result from no distrust of them, but feeling that valor and devotion could accomplish nothing that could compensate for the loss which would have attended the continuation of the contest. I have determined to avoid the useless sacrifice of those whose past services have endured them to their countrymen. You will take with you the satisfaction that proceeds from the consciousness of duty faithfully performed. And I earnestly pray that a merciful God may extend to you his blessing and protection. With an increasing admiration of your constancy and devotion to your country. And a grateful remembrance of your kind and generous consideration of myself. I bid you in an affectionate farewell. Robert E. Lee's farewell to the Army of Northern